All right, good morning, guys. So the question is, when's the last time you heard God's voice? When's the last time you can say that, you know, you had an encounter where maybe your pastor was speaking or maybe you were listening to a CD or reading a book or quietly in prayer or opening God's word and you had this sense that God was speaking directly to you. We have a God who does that for us. I mean, it's absolutely me, but that's what God does for us. In Jeremiah 1, uh, Jeremiah heard directly from God. Uh, God comes to Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, I knew you <laughs> even before I formed you in your mother's womb. I set you apart and I anointed you so that you would be my prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah responds with, I'm too young. <laughs> I can't be your spokesman. They won't even listen to me. And so God says, don't say that. And he puts his hand on Jeremiah's voice and says, I'm going to give you the words to say. I will tell you what to say. And then he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah says, I see the branch of an almond tree. And then God does a play on words. And he said, because the, the word for almond branch in Hebrew is shakt, S-H-A-Q-E-D. And the word for watching over you is shakt, C-H-O-Q-U-E-D. And so he says, yes, you see shakt. I want you always to remember shakt. I'm always overlooking. I'm always watching. And I will accomplish my purposes. And then he says, now what do you see? And Jeremiah says, I see a boiling pot. And it's, it's flowing over from the north. And he said, yeah, I'm going to bring the enemies, Israel's enemies from the north, down. And they're going to come as terrorists and attack Israel. And I want you to let the people know that's what's going to happen. And then in chapter 2, he says, the first assignment that you have is to ask Israel, what happened? There was a time when you, Israel, loved me like a bride loves her new husband. You served me. You worshipped me. You honored me. So what happened? <laughs> Why did you turn? Why did your ancestors decide that you would put me aside and take on gods who were worthless, who, who were idols, who had nothing? And then he says, tell them to go as far west as Cyprus and as far east as Kedar. That's, his, that's the known world at that time. Nowhere else will you see anything as crazy as this. You took a glorious living God and replaced him for a worthless God, and now you've become worthless. I read, I was reading this on August 18th on an airplane. <laughs> I got that far, and I closed the book because I felt a nudge. I felt like God was saying, we have something we need to talk about. <laughs> have you had that happen? Now, I'm going to clarify something, okay? When I was... Um, with Mohawk, building my career, I was traveling a lot. And so at the airport, I would typically pick up a book to read on a flight out west or whatever. And I landed on Ogmandino. Has anybody ever read his stuff? <laughs> it's uh, The Choice, The Greatest Salesman That Ever Lived, The Richest Man in Babylon. He's a gifted writer. And what I really liked about him is that he, he didn't talk about what, he talked about why. He talked about what's your why. Why do you exist? Where are we going? What is this all about anyway? But one time I was looking at one of his books, and right next to it, there was a book that called, it was called Conversations with God. And I was on the run. I was, I was praying when I needed to pray. <laughs> I didn't really understand what prayer was, relationship building with God. So I thought, man, maybe that's a book I need to read. So I grabbed it, and I got on the plane, and I started reading it. And I probably should have put it in the men's room, because that's what that paper might have been better used for. <laughs> Whatever that person was talking about was not the God that I know. It was a new age thing. It was light candles, get quiet, do yoga, meditate, have conversations with God. Now let me clarify, what we're going to talk about today 
is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the God of covenants. It's the God who says the way through me is through Jesus Christ and what he did. And then Jesus Christ said, I'm going to send you a helper. And so what we're going to talk about is the voice of that helper. You know, some people might say there's 7 billion people on the planet. How can anybody be so narrow-minded as to say that there's only one way? There's only one way to God through Jesus. I think a better question is, how can God give us any way? <laughs> I mean, we don't deserve any way through him, but the way is through Jesus Christ. Now, how many people have an older brother? How many people think your older brother is great? I only asked that part of the question because my brother's right here. <laughs> He's visiting from Milwaukee. So, <laughs> Well, if you're an older brother, if you're a younger brother, I should say, if you're a younger brother, you're probably used to getting hand-me-downs, right? I mean, whatever your older brother gets for, for, a, for a gift, for clothing, you know that probably in, within a year or two you're going to be wearing that. Um, I think in Christianity sometimes we've gotten used to hand-me-downs. Our pastor studies, and he, he prepares a message, and he brings it. And that's meaningful. It is. It's needed. It's, it's you know, it, it, we, we need teachers. In fact, we're warned not to even want to be a teacher. But that's needed. But I, I, was, I'm, I want to say this. For too long in my life, I, I relied too much on hand-me-downs. What someone else studied... What someone else really got next to God and discovered and then shared with me and I grabbed that crumb and I lived, tried to live on that for a while. There needs to come a time in our life, guys, when we're hearing directly from God, when we hear his voice. And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning is how does that happen. When I closed that book on the airplane, I've felt that nudge before. I know that nudge. <laughs> In fact, I actually like that nudge. I wanted to say, stop the plane. Because <laughs> I was on an airplane. I was coming back from Mayo Clinic. It was the night before encounter. And I was flying back when I read that. And I knew God had something for me, so I just closed the book. And, and I've known from before, it usually takes about an hour for me to even figure out what it is. <laughs> so I started going through Jeremiah. And I was like, okay, do I have an idol in my life? Have I been given too much time to something that's worthless? And now I'm becoming worthless because of that? Is, what, is that what God wants to tell me right now? And the truth is, that's probably, there's probably some truth in that, but that wasn't it. It was clear that wasn't it. So where I landed is, take, take your key verse card, and let's look at that first verse. Jeremiah 1, 11 through 12. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I am watching and I will certainly carry out all my plans. Now, if anybody should get this verse, it's probably me in this whole room. I live on Almond Lane. When I pull in our subdivision, there's a sign that says Almond Tree Farms. <laughs> now, if I know that God is in charge, that he's watching, and he's going to accomplish his purposes, why do I tend to grab things so often? I was in, when I read this, I was in a rift, in a, 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 very, uh, a relationship that's, was, that is very important to me. Something that happened earlier in the summer, a good friend of mine was going through something very rough. And so I spoke into it. Now, what I said was true. What I said was said in love. What I said should not have been said. Why did I say it? I'm a type A guy. I'm a fix-it guy. I'm a take-control guy. I didn't ask God if I should say it. I didn't check to see if this was the right timing to say it. It wasn't the right timing to say it, and it caused a rift. And the rift lasted June, July. We're now in August when I, re when I read this. And so that's, that's what I knew God. God had that little thing in Jeremiah for me. So I sat down, 
And I immediately, in fact, I'm going to share it with you. I wrote down a bunch of questions on the airplane. I grabbed a piece of paper. I said, you know, I think here's some questions I need to answer. Just how, just how intimately involved does God want to be in my daily activities, my decisions, in every aspect of my life? Does he speak to me more than I currently hear him? What is his desire right now regarding my life and relationship with him? What's my desire? How does God, who's always watching and will carry out his plans, view my current relationship with him? Is there anything standing in the way of a clean relationship? Do I have margins on my daily calendar where I just sit quietly to hear him? What would that look like? What does that look like? What does the Bible say? Do I know his voice? Do I really know his voice? Do I seek it? And do I really hear it? Do we hear it? Do we hear God's voice? Um, sometimes I think my, my shell is just a little bit too hard. I almost want to hit myself in the head. <laughs> And say, why is that? What, what, why, do, why do I do that? So let's um, take a look at the other verses on on the going on your going on the key verses card. Okay, cease striving. This is Psalm forty six verse ten. Cease striving. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the na among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Here's Isaiah weighing in. Whether you turn to the right or to the left. Your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And then in 1 Kings, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small voice. In John chapter 10, and we're going to camp there for just a minute before I send it to the tables. In John chapter 10, Jesus paints such an awesome picture of what he intends our relationship with him to be like. I failed to put it on the going deeper card, so I'll, let me just read it. It's the first five verses. I, now, the context is this. Jesus is, has a, is talking to a big crowd. And he turns to the Pharisees and he says to them, that if you, if you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, Jesus replied, but you remain guilty because you claim that you can see. The Pharisees had asked him, are you saying that we don't know what we're talking about? He said, you're blind because you claim that you can see, but you can't. And then he goes into the story of painting what, his, what he wants relationship with us to be like, what relationship is like for, for the shepherd and sheep. I tell you the truth, anyone who, want, who, who sneaks over the wall of the sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognizes his voice and comes to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They, don't, they won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Now, <laughs> clearly it's hard for us to get the full picture of what, what that dynamic is like. So if, if we were living back at this time, what we would understand is that this is how shepherds work back then. A typical shepherd would have 100 sheep. And they would lead them to various places where there was water and places for them to eat. And then at night, they'd bring them to a sheep fold. So a sheep fold is, is built with a wall about waist high, so the sheep can't get out of it because they can't jump. <laughs> and it only had one doorway leading in. So typically, 10 shepherds would share one sheep fold. So at night, as the sun was saying, they would bring all the sheep into the sheep fold. So you got 10 shepherds basically leading a thousand sheep, a hundred, each of them have a hundred. So now a thousand sheep go into a sheepfold. Nine of the shepherds go back to the city to get some sleep. 
And one shepherd stays and lays himself across the doorway so that the sheep won't, can't go out. That guy's called the porter or the gatekeeper. And then the next morning, what happens is the, everybody cleans up, comes back, and then the shepherd recognizes, or the, 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 the porter, the sheep, the, the gatekeeper recognizes this guy coming is one of the 10 shepherds. So he lets him in. And this guy stands and he calls his sheep. So if you can imagine, you got a thousand sheep, you're the first guy there. You start calling your sheep and somehow they know your voice and your sheep come out one by one. And now you take your hundred sheep and you leave and then the next guy does that. Now I look at that and say, how can that even happen? <laughs> I mean, how, how does that even happen? To connect the dots, I would say, how many people have a dog? How many people have more than one dog? How many people have 10 dogs? <laughs> That's usually not the case unless you're raising them. We get it with our dogs, right? I mean, you can have dog, two dogs that look exactly alike. But and let's say they're both named Coco. But if you say Coco and it's your dog, Coco's coming to you, right? That's the way it was with a shepherd and a sheep. The shepherd spends so much time with the sheep. It's because time spent that the shepherd knows the sheep to that degree that he can stand out there and call each one's name and they recognize his name. And there may be all kinds of guys, sheep call the same thing, but because of the inflection in his voice, because of who he is, that sheep knows him and that sheep comes out. And so the question we have to ask ourselves, is that the kind of relationship we have with our shepherd? Do we know him like that? Do we know his voice? He knows our name. He calls our name. Are we hearing it? Or are we running right by it? Our tendency is to think that when moments like that happen, like on the plane or like Ryan mentioned in the middle of the night, or sometimes I'll get it in the shower, our tendency is to think that's weird. <laughs> that's awkward. What was that? I wonder how many times God's speaking to you and you just don't hear it because we're not slowing down enough. Do we have that type of relationship with our shepherd? We're spending so much time with him that he, that, that he knows our voice. Look at one more verse and then we're going to send it to the table. Um, I'm going to unpack that John 10, 27 for just a second. It says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep speaks to relationship. Jesus calls us his sheep. We're one of his. And because of that relationship, there's a result. Or there, the result is that we're going to hear his voice. Do you know, Ryan and I sound a whole lot alike. There's people that when they hear our voice, they think, who is that? Is that Ron or is that Ryan? And, and I've used that. <laughs> I've, <laughs> particularly when he was a, a teenager, I used that. <laughs> and he would be yelling at the phone, it's my dad, stop talking. <laughs> but there's some people we, can't ever, we could never fool. And today, there's some people we can never fool. Now, when we have a new employee, I'll call in. They don't know if it's me or Ryan. But Christine knows, and Pauline knows. Do you know why? Because of time spent. Because we spend enough time together. Sandy knows whether it's Ryan or me. Christy knows whether it's me or Ryan. The boys know. Because of the time that we spend together. If you're not hearing God's voice, you've got to ask yourself, am I spending enough time with him? Am I putting his word as a priority? Or am I chasing some worthless idols and in the end becoming worthless myself? My sheep relationship, hear my voice, that's the result, and I know them. Do you realize that God knows every little nuance about it? Just like these shepherds who get to know their sheep, that they know that's my sheep. You know, in today's world, the way, shepherd, the way, the way uh, uh, herding sheep is done, it's done by helicopters and sheepdogs 
and tags on a, on a sheep. It's become technology. Shepherding has become technology. They actually have helicopters that go around and move, the, move them where they want to go, and they train the dogs to follow what the helicopter wants to do. And, the, and again, they're all tagged in case somebody, one happens to go off in the way. We live in a technology world. Sometimes that's what we do with sheep and shepherds today is reflected in the way we, we treat our own Christianity, I think. Maybe sometimes we need to shut off the phone, right? There's, you know, pay attention to that because there's something in our brain that we actually like it when our phone goes beep. <laughs> when we hear something, an, another little ding in the phone or something. And so pay attention to that and shut down, shut, shut it down. Sometimes we can rely too much on technology even for our growth. Watch a tape, <laughs> go on YouTube. God calls us to per personal relationship with us. He knows us. How well are we getting to know him? And is that our desire? We have a God and we have a privilege because we're his children to actually hear God's voice. All right. We've got a few more things to talk about, which I'm going to save to the end. I've talked enough for now. Let me send it to the tables and table leaders, take it from here, okay? <laughs> talk about at the tables on question number two in what ways do you hear God's voice you're going through your week we're busy guys we've got a lot to do spending time with God, spending time with God. Yeah. In, the word. in the word I'd say the word is the safest and should be the most common place that we hear God's word that we hear God speak to us through his word in fact any other place where you hear God's voice, the word is the checkpoint to see if it's really accurate or not, right? Tim? Well, something we, we said is none of us have really heard like a spoken voice in the mind or in different circumstances. Mm -hmm. It would happen at the right time. Yeah, God can definitely speak through circumstances. No question about it, Aaron. All, all of them that we talked about fell into one of two categories. First hand, which was the word, was first hand or second hand. That was it. The first hand or second hand. And right. You hear the second hand once, whether it's YouTube video or pastor or whatever it is, we have to go back to the first hand and check it out and make sure it's that's something. Yeah, first hand and second hand. First hand is God's word, second hand can be a whole lot of different things. You know, God speaks to us through nature. Everything cries out that He exists. That's how personal he is. I th you know, there's times when, when uh, I'm not sure what to do, and I'll call Gail. I'll say, hey, Gail, I'm, I'm overdue for you to meet you at Waffle House for a breakfast. I need a Gail fix. <laughs> and then I'll unpack two or three things. You have a mentor, and sometimes God will use a mentor to speak to you, right, through the wisdom, through, through his knowledge of the word. My wife will speak to me sometimes. <laughs> Anybody else? Listening, I, I think the church doesn't always teach us the importance of listening. Um, yes. And, and just sitting and listening to God. Um, right. But, you know, something that's really powerful, we're all busy people. We all have a million things that we're doing. You know, time in your car, your community, with our phones now, we can just hit the Bible app and have it just talk to us. That's true. You can go through, you know, you can go through most of the gospels in a week, really, if you're in the car two hours a day. So, that's a big one I mean that, that is a real big one is listening okay um, you know how few people really know how to listen and that means us <laughs> how well do we really listen when someone's talking and how does that spill over to this relationship that Jesus calls us into with him 
Do we take time to truly listen? What's he saying? You read something, you stop, and now you just listen for a while. You pray, but then you stop and you listen. We're told to expect to hear God's voice. Look at going deeper. Psalm 37, verse 7. Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for him. Check yourself on this. I mean, sometimes it's very easy for us to go, go to church. We're in the car. We're either thinking to ourselves or talking to the person we went with and saying, yeah, he didn't have it today, did he? <laughs> he was kind of flat. He needs to work on that. <laughs> Maybe it's you that needs to be worked on. <laughs> Maybe we need to learn how to really listen, right? Um, look at that second one, Ecclesiastes. As you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises and don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven and you are here on earth, so let your words be few. And then look at Isaiah, the next one down. I will lead the blind by the way they do not know and paths they do not know I will guide them. I will make darkness into light before them and rugged places into plains. These are the things I will do and I will not leave them undone. <laughs> Give it up to God, right? I mean, wow. That's the kind of relationship he wants to have for us. I was sharing at the table, I was reading this week, uh, you remember the name Henry Blackaby? He wrote the book, Experiencing God. Uh, that book was probably written 20 years ago. Uh, it's, it is full of great nuggets, great disciplines, great insights on our personal relationship with God and learning how we can experience God more and more in our everyday life. And so the person I was reading uh, was, was excited because he was granted an interview with Henry Blackaby. So he had one big question. How can we hear God's voice? And so he had tablet in hand and was expecting a 20-minute dissertation and taking all kinds of notes. And Henry Blackaby looked at him and said, it's really easy. The more you know him, the more you're going to hear him. <laughs> which is very true. And so, really, our part in that is getting to know him. And that's his word, and that's fellowship, it's what we're doing here, and that's taking time to listen. Question for you, how do you know if it's not God's voice? When you hear something and you're listening, how do you know if it's, if it's really God's voice or it's maybe the angel of light <laughs> who's native tongue is lying who wants to take you off on a, on a sideway path. How do we know? <laughs> Scripture, that's, that, that probably is the best answer you could have. And I will give you another dimension to that answer as well, okay? Um, today, if somebody comes up to me and says, Ryan said this, I will tell you this, I will immediately know if Ryan said that or not. Do you know why? Because we've been through it. We have been through it. <laughs> I mean, from him being a young kid and playing to 16 when he wanted to become a man a little two years younger than I wanted him to be, <laughs> we started clashing heads and we went through it and he went off to college but we hung together. And then he came into our business and we clashed heads but we hung together and we had made a lot of decisions. We've launched companies together. We've made uh, employees' decisions together. We talked life together. We talked family together. We just spend so much time together. I know how he thinks. I know what his values are. And if somebody tells me Ryan said this, I'm going to know that <laughs> you're spinning that one. <laughs> or I'm going to know, yeah, Ryan would say that. That's the only way we can, again, go back to what Henry Blackaby said. You're going to know God's voice because you get to know him. How much time are we spending really getting to know him? Pouring ourselves into God's word. Most important thing we can do, biggest priority we can have is fall in love with God's word. Get to know God's word. Study it from all. There's so many different ways to study God's word. Be anxious to get there. Instead of watching one more spin on Hillary and Trump, <laughs> how about taking that time 
and spending that hour pouring yourself into God's Word and get to know Him just a little bit more. You know, if you need some help in that on, on, on great ways to look at God's Word, talk to me. Talk to me. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll help you through that. Your table leader will help you through that. Talk to someone who you respect who's spending time in God's Word and learn how to fall in love with it. Learn how to dig into it. Learn how to study it. It's the most important thing we can do as men. It's the most important thing you can pass on to the next generation is that, getting to know God. Take one more look at John 10, 27, the fourth verse down on key verses. Jesus says, <laughs> my sheep, I have a relationship. They're my sheep. Hear my voice. The result of this relationship is they're going to hear my voice. You're going to hear my voice. And the reason you're going to hear them here is because I know you. I know them. And then the reaction, they follow me. That's the reaction of the sheep. Because of the way we get to know our shepherd, we're going to follow the sheep. So how do we do it? How do we do that? How do we follow him? <laughs> how do we follow him? That's what next week's about. That's what part two is about. Uh, the analogy I use is if you watch the Olympics, um, if you watch the Olympics, one of the most intriguing things to me was pole vaulting. 19 feet, 7 inches. That's what the pole vault winner hit. <laughs> That's almost insane if you can picture that bar, right? And so sometimes as men, we can look at what God expects of us, what he wants of us, and we can say, that's like a pole vault. I can't get over the top of that. But yes, we can. And so we're gonna, next week we're going to talk about how because he provides the way. So close at your table. Uh, give some thought to this, hearing God's voice. He wants us to hear it. He wants us to expectantly hear it. And he gives us tools to hear it. And so we just have to listen. <laughs> and we have to get to know him better. Close at the table. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, guys.